G'day all, welcome to Hardly A Week. So this week, like I said last week, is I'm gonna be covering something different than I normally would. So I would normally jump on this week in four and six and step through some of the articles, share my opinions, where I think the cyber industry is or where you can go to look next or things to learn. What I covered last week was I had a catch up with a friend who was a new friend, uh, but they told me about their ordeal with the cyber stalker. And I found there wasn't too much technical information out there. And I am stepping through the process now with helping them to recover their digital life. And what I want to do each week is kind of cover the things that I've done in the last week to help this new friend of mine. So before we're beginning, obviously, uh, if you're in this situation, it is horrible and I really feel for you. I highly advise you seek out your mental health support, contact the police, um, make sure you're starting down that pathway already. They will give you help. Where I'm seeing there's a gap is that afterwards the evidence is collected is there's no help to really help you reclaim your digital life after that. Um, so before you begin, make sure you've collected all the evidence you would need against the stalker. You don't want to go and wipe all your devices before uh, you've gone and collected that because um, you will need that type of evidence to help you if you're going to take them to court or get a restraining order or, or, or any of that kind of stuff. And again, I'm not a legal professional, so go get legal help, go see the police. Um, but this should be the priority before wiping the devices. Now, these next steps is th what we're going to be doing this week is covering what I think the preparation is for you to start rebuilding your life. Now, this is all going to be based on the scenario that I'm working with my friend and the blogs that I did cover last week did say go get technical help and hopefully this is the start of the technical help because it's going to be different for everyone it dep really depends on how paranoid you are with your personal data going forward from now and it is completely okay to be fully paranoid depending on how severe the cyber stalking or even physical stalking is so that's the caveat for this. Let's jump into the questions that I've put together for my friend. So the first thing we're gonna do is list all the devices that you currently have, mobile phones, laptops, smart home devices. This can include smart speakers, uh, things like Alexia. Um, I put Google Doc here. I think that's meant to be the, the Google Dot. The, um, they're like the Alexia things. There's plenty of them other out there. Uh, any interconnected, internet connected CCTV, smart doorbells, smart TV, um, there's fridges, washing machines, internet connected appliances, online thermostats. Uh, there's like smart uh, photo frames, anything you can think of that has even maybe a Bluetooth connection. I would just list everything that you can think of within your house. Now, should also include wearable technology. Um, game consoles is a big one because you can often get uh, location information on chat sessions potentially within there and then also your Wi-Fi routers so if you just have the single one um, in your home but we would be needing to reset this as well so first thing is list out all of your devices this will help kind of frame your thought pattern for the rest of this questionnaire and also know what we need to go and categorize and reset and, and all this kind of stuff now if you're super paranoid and someone had you think they're technically savvy and they had physical access to a device it would be the process of potentially um, replacing all your devices. Now, number two is list all of the data that you wish to back up offline. So these are things like emails, photos, personal files, um, could be medical history that you have, anything that you can think of that you wanna get, because after we start wiping these devices, and we're also gonna be, um, I guess, burning the online accounts as well, is you won't have access to these things. now. You might be worried about emails, I'm going to have to back them up. There is a way we can back them up and then restore them into a new email client. So you will have them there. Uh, but we'll also be setting up new emails in a more secure provider and that kind of thing as well. So um, just anything that you want to keep. So usually people want to keep their photos. Um, that's understandable. We're going to set up an offline backup for these as well. Um, and then personal files as well. So like for me, uh, I used to be in the military, it'd be like my medical history that I would wanna keep here. Um, I'd also be backing this up offline. Then we're gonna go through and list all of our social media, our entertainment and our chat accounts. This can be streaming, gaming, social, anything we can think of. Um, we're gonna be going through and deactivating all these. 
and uh, we're going to be really having a conversation about what is needed going forward um, and how we're going to create the accounts in a safe way. So this is things like complex passwords, we're going to have a way to store those complex passwords. We're also going to be setting up MFA for anything. Anything that doesn't have MFA, if you're kind of in this boat of cyber stalking, we're not even going to look at. So um, most things have two-factor at least these days, if not MFA. Um, and we're going to be looking at secure ways to be doing all of this to make it um, as safe as possible. Uh, we're going to then collect a list of the accounts that you want to move to your new line personality. Um, what I mean here by accounts is kind of the friends that you have that you know you want to keep. So there's going to be a transition period where you're going to be going offline. Um, and we're going to be want to, want to reach out to those friends that we really want to um, keep connected with that we we are all dispersed in the world and this could be maybe we move from offline and we just get their mobile numbers and we start to call them um, or we start to use things like just signal for messaging or we only pick maybe um, one online personal account that we want to use to to keep in contact with these people but you really need to think about the accounts of people that you want to stay in contact with and then also if they're understanding and, and they potentially know some of your situation um, they're going to be understandable if they need to move to another app like Signal to stay in contact with you. But um, this is an important one to think of because we don't want to separate uh, the individual or you yourself who's going through this from the people that really care about you. Next thing is listening bank savings investment apps. Um, not just apps, just like anywhere you've got banking. Um, if you're going through this kind of issue and you've got people that are targeting you, there are ways that you could be exploited or your identity can be faked. So. What we want to do here, um, and a lot of people online who are in the social media space or their influencers or that kind of thing, actually have a solid agreement with their bank that um, like no transactions over a certain amount can be done without them being there in the bank in person. Now, this sucks. Um, everything's going digital these days, but if you're really worried uh, about your finances and the security of your, your money, your savings, your investments, um, this could be a route that you need to go. Once you have that signed with the bank, then it's on them if they then break that agreement. So um, you might find it hard if you don't do this, but I have seen this in a lot of spaces where there's the, the signed agreement between the individual and the bank that they have to be there for something over a certain amount. Um, or if it's fishy, they have to call them. Um, these banks, they're making money off your money. So if you need these in place, like let's start putting these into place. Um, this is the last question I had, so it's just, is there anything else you can think of? So this is my first time doing this, going through and helping someone. Um, any of the viewers who have anything else that they could think of um, that could be useful to what I'm doing now? I, obviously, I'm not going to be exposing too many details of the person that I'm helping. Um, but if there's anything else you can think of right now, this is just the initial questionnaire to really kickstart um, this process. Now. What I'm also going to be doing in the back end is I'm actually going to be creating a, um, a website and you can sign up for a newsletter and I'm going to be feeding some of this information in through that newsletter and also making these um, completely free and available on my website for you to go and download at some point. But I will let you know when those go up. But that's it for me this week at Hardly Adequate. If you have enjoyed the content, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, you can grab this as a podcast off any of your favorite podcasting apps. Um, and if you'd like to support me, um, jump onto my website, hardlyadequate.com. There's a way you can donate there. Uh, but as always, subscribing to my YouTube channel and everything else helps uh, me immensely. So um, thanks, everyone. I will have something else for you next week with the more that I go through with this. And stay safe out there, and I'll see you all later.